Previously on the Carbide Camp Knife series, the final pieces of the knives, the G10 scales, were machined and integrated with the handle using a combination of mechanical fasteners and adhesives. Now we enter the final stretch to complete these knives, putting an edge on the blades and making sheaths to carry the knives in. The entirety of the carbide camp knife exists right here. It's not finished yet, but there's nothing more to add, only remove. But before I can put an edge on this blade, I want to have a way to protect it and myself, so I'm making a sheath. But I need to protect the knife before I can protect the knife, so I've wrapped the blade in some masking tape. This protects the meticulously finished surface from any scratches or mishandling, although the more important reason for this is that it preserves a little bit of breathing room in the sheath when you're forming it so that the knife slides in and out freely without friction once you remove the tape. The first method I'm using to make my sheath is the simplest. I start by heating up two pieces of Kydex, a thermoplastic commonly used for applications like this. I'm heating it up in my oven at about 340 degrees Fahrenheit or about 170 C on top of a scrap sheet of aluminum. If you do this directly on the grates you can get uneven heating, potentially transferring marks into your sheet, and you also risk the Kydex drooping down into your heating element if you let it sit for too long. The aluminum plate helps conduct heat quickly and evenly into your Kydex. When your Kydex takes on the pliability of nylon webbing, slap the knife in between the two sheets and squeeze. This Kydex press that I'm using is just a couple planks of MDF on which I glued foam specifically made for this process. This foam is engineered to have minimal memory given the temperature extremes it has to endure, but if you're only making a few knives you could probably get away with just about any kind of dense foam, just don't expect it to stay flat for as long. It takes a couple minutes for the Kydex to harden because foam is a notoriously good insulator, so don't be in a rush to pop open the press and take a peek. Once the shape is set, take everything out and trace where you want your eyelets or rivets to go. One thing to keep in mind is how close you can get to the profile of your knife with your flaring die. I bought the kind of dies that you can hit with a hammer, but the bottom die is such a large radius that it limits how close you can get to the grip. The closer you can get to this area, the better the sheath will be able to pinch the handle and retain the blade. The kind of dies you put in an arbor press are better in this regard. I recommend using 4 eyelets per side for a blade between 3-4 to four inches long. If you want a more detailed video about making a kydex sheath like this, I'll link to a video by Aaron Guff who I learned a lot about knife making from. Another sheath variation would be a single piece folded kydex design. Doing it this way will also allow you to integrate a belt clip which is something I picked up from Walter Sorrels. I'll link to his video as well in the description below. Using a paper template, I figured out about how much Kydex I needed and threw it in the oven. Once it was at temperature, I folded my knife inside the Kydex like a taco and pressed it together. It's important to make sure you pull the Kydex tight around the knife so it conforms against the spine. There were a couple times where I wasn't thrilled with the final shape so I threw the Kydex back in the oven to try again. Once you have a workable sheath, drill and rivet along the edges. Both of these sheath designs will need to be cleaned up on the bandsaw or a belt sander, but with how easily this stuff melts, I recommend you do the majority of your material removal with the bandsaw, otherwise you'll have semi-molten bits of kydex raining down on your hands. The tail that remains for your clip will need to be molded around a surrogate for your belt. Here I have a little piece of scrap plywood that I cut to 1.5 inches in width and machined in a shallow saddle shape to roughly match the contours of the knife. This lets me get a relatively low profile clip once I use a heat gun to form the kydex tail. And that's the rough process for making a sheath like this. If you want more details, I encourage you to check out the videos that I have linked in the description. For sharpening my blades, I'm using a setup from Lansky. You could make your own jig, but this system is relatively affordable and produces good results, though it can be a little slow at first. If you're starting from no edge whatsoever, I would jumpstart the secondary bevel on the belt sander. Just touch the edge really quickly to the belt to shave off the corners and get it roughly V-shaped. That will immediately save you about 15 minutes of shaping with the rough stone in the Lansky kit. You start by attaching the guide rods to the stones and picking an angle to sharpen at. For kitchen knives and other precision implements, you'll want to use the shallower angles like 17 or 20 degrees. 25 is a better angle for an outdoor knife which needs to take some abuse. Go through the stones from rough to fine, moving in a diagonal direction just like when we were sanding the faces of the bevels so that you can use the marks to determine whether or not you've touched the entirety of the edge. You want to continue to remove material with the stone until you feel a burr across the backside of the blade's edge. It should just barely catch your fingernail. After a couple blades you'll settle into a comfortable rhythm and hunting down spots that need additional sharpening will become second nature. 
Once you've worked both sides with all three stones, you can scrap the blade on leather or even cardboard, which will help straighten the last couple microns of metal at the very edge of the blade. And then you're finally done. You've made an honest to goodness knife, or four. Testing through paracord, nylon webbing, foam, and junk mail reveals that this blade will cut. Is it perfect? No. Is it functional? Yes. Did I learn an incredible amount? Absolutely. For me, this experience was both a fun, though stressful test of the Nomad, and also a chance to try something new. I tried out some unfamiliar techniques in Fusion 360, I trial and errored my way to a serviceable recipe for machining steel, I practiced some basic techniques of knife making, I learned to bend material science to my will, and I overcame a whole boatload of uncertainty to reach this point. Diving into a new craft can be daunting, but at least for me, having a CNC assistant really helped me achieve things I would otherwise not even want to attempt. The carbide camp knife might not be entirely handmade, but it was mind-made, and that's something I couldn't have done without approachable digital fabrication tools. For those of you who followed along throughout the entire journey, I hope it's been at least mildly entertaining and perhaps even educational. Until next time, good luck and have fun making your own projects, folks.